Hi friends, it's Shari. Today I have a really fun pull and pop card with a theme from the movie Up. So for my stamps, I'm using Happy Village for my little house. And then I'm going to be using Bicycle Built for You for that trio of balloons. I'm stamping my balloons in River Rock ink. This is a gray Copic friendly ink. And I've made a little color chart here so you can see all the colors that I have pulled for my balloons. Now I pulled up images of the house with the balloons from the movie on my computer and pulled some markers to represent all the colors of balloons in my images. I'm going to do some simple coloring, coloring each balloon all over with one color and then going back with that same color to add a little bit of shadow. I'm going to color two to three balloons for each color and make sure that their placement in the bundle of three is different so that each bundle of balloons will be different from the next. I do want to vary my colors in here. You can see I went back and added that shadow on the blue. Sometimes I feel like the shadow gets added a little bit better when you're using the same color when you do it after that ink is kind of absorbed into the paper a little bit. So I went in and did my teal, doing my yellow. I'm just trying to skip around between the cool colors and the warm colors and make sure I have a lot of variety in my balloon bundles. Now I only have seven stamped out here, but I ended up using nine to create my final card. So I will be adding a couple as well. And it did really help for me to already see the colors on that sheet of paper to kind of see what I had to work with. Now this really red one that I just colored, I think I only did one of those. So that's gonna be like the Where's Waldo balloon in this big bunch of balloons. Now I'm moving on to my little house. Now this is stamped in the jet black ink. You can see I did have some bundles of balloons in black before, but I decided I liked the gray better. I'm using a picture of the house that's on my computer as a guide to show me the colors that I need to use and where to place them. Now this is not the exact shape house of course, but I'm making it as close as I can. I did pull in a light blue for the windows and I'm going to pull in a really light pink for the chimney which is different than the colors I had pulled out. And now I just have some thin line pins that I have on my desk. I have a bunch of these and a bunch of colors and I'm just adding some details. So I pulled out a green pin to add some siding to that green gable and then I have a purple pin to add some details of some shingles on the roof. And I just think that this really makes this house look nice and special. So I'll use the coordinating dies to cut out all of my images. And then now comes the task of arranging my balloons. So I did work to figure out where I wanted to place my balloons before I started gluing them together because I wanted to make sure that I didn't have any of the same colors touching each other. So you can see I had some purples touching each other and some yellows touching each other and I wanted to make sure that it looked like a nice variety of balloons and I didn't have the same colors near each other. Once I kind of have a good idea of where I want them, I'm going to add some liquid glue and start to create a big giant balloon bundle. So I'm starting with that one that's in the front and at the bottom. And then I'm just layering each one behind. I'm adding a dot of glue where I know it's going to overlap. And then I'm placing my balloons kind of between the ones below. So I only have eight bunches of balloons right now and as I place this last one I decided I needed one more for the very top so I stamped out another one and colored it. In this case I could tell what balloons were going to be near it so I made sure that I colored it in colors that were not the same as the balloons it was going to touch and then I think that just finishes off the top really nicely to have that last bunch of balloons up there. Now I want to add this to my house like it's coming out of that little chimney. So I just put some liquid glue and then I'm going to layer those strings of that bottom bunch behind. 
Now I'm taking my white gel pen and just adding a little shine mark to all the balloons to make them look shiny and more balloon-like. Now I'm going to move on to my background. I have a piece of moonstone cardstock cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. This is going to be my background panel. And I'm going to do some hot foiling with the cloud hot foil background plate and some prism hot foil. So I got my glimmer plate all nice and hot, ran it through my die cut machine and just look at those pretty foiled clouds for my background. I think that this is a really nice way to add some clouds and some shimmer and it's not going to fill the background too much and distract from my image. I'm taking a little sand eraser and just cleaning up the edges where I got some overfoiling. In hindsight, I probably did not need to do this because I'm going to cover up the bottom, but I just wanted to show you that you could clean up any overfoiling you might have in case you were not covering up the clouds at the bottom. And I'm making a pull and pop pull tab card today, so I'm going to use the die for the pull and pop pull tab that cuts the slots. This to the right here is kind of my practice piece, and I've used it a lot as reference to kind of see where images are going to go. So that wide part is going to kind of line up with the bottom slot is what I've decided, and that's going to help me place my slots properly on my background piece. And I'm actually just going to measure. It's about two inches up from the bottom. So I'll just draw a little tick mark and that will give me the proper placement of those slots so that my image ends up in the right place. I wanted to put the place where you adhere the tab behind the balloons, not behind the house. So that's why I'm working to make sure it ends up in the right place. Those balloons are much bigger and they're going to hide that tab much better. So once I've got it where I think it needs to be, I'm going to hold that in place with a little bit of tape and run it through my die cut machine to cut those slots for the pull and pop tab. I'm also going to cut the tab and the stabilizer piece from that same Moonstone cardstock so that it will match my background. And now I can fold along the score lines that the die creates. And it is helpful to line up that long skinny one against the side of a ruler to get it started. And then you can reinforce that fold with a bone folder. So I'm folding this fold towards me in a valley fold. And then I will fold the other one away from me to make a Z fold on this whole tab. Then I can do the same thing with the stabilizer piece folding one piece towards me and one piece away from me. Now I want to take my tab and flip it over to the back side, flip the panel over to the back side, thread the bottom through the bottom slot, the top through the top slot, and then make sure that short T piece also gets threaded through that top slot. So you can see there how that's going to work. And before I put the stabilizer piece on, I'm going to go ahead and work on my clouds that go along the bottom. So I'm using the puffy cloud border die, the one with the larger clouds. And I'm just going to cut a piece of white cardstock that's four and a quarter wide with that puffy cloud. Now what I'm trying to do is to get that big hump of the clouds right at my tab and then it kind of dipped down on the right side. So that's why I'm trying to line it up. Then I can fine tune my placement as far as the height goes. I'm going to draw a line on the back with a pencil so I know where to trim this down. And then I know that my clouds will be the right height to go along the bottom and hide that little slot. Now I'm going to go ahead and put that stabilizer piece on there I'm using a little bit of liquid glue. I want to line it up to where the top of it is right above that slot. Then I can fold it down against the big tab, fold the little tab back, add a little bit of glue, and fold the big tab back on it. Now for the clouds, I do want to cut a little notch at the bottom, so I'm going to use the die in the pull and pop pull tab set to cut that little notch. You line up that large bar against the bottom of the cardstock and those two little triangular pieces on each side of the tab. This will cut a little decorative notch with some stitching. 
Now to add this background panel to a card base. Where I've drawn those pencil lines is where I want to put my adhesive. So all the way along the top and the bottom, but only down from the top and the bottom a little bit on each side. So I'll just add my double-sided tape right in the places where you saw me draw my pencil line. Then I can pull off the liner paper of my adhesive and I'm just going to stick this directly to a card base that is four and a quarter by five and a half. So I'll just line that up and then I'll just make sure that the top and the bottom and the sides are nice and stuck down. Now for my clouds, I'm going to use some foam tape, but I'm marking on the back side where I want to be sure that there is no tape. I want to be sure that no tape goes in that area with the X. That way it doesn't get in the way of my tab moving. I don't want to stick anything in that area where the tab is. So I'm just adding some foam tape all over the back of this and this will pop my clouds up off the background nicely and also give that tab some really good room to move in there. So I'll just pull off the liner paper from that foam adhesive and pop this right at the bottom, lining up the bottom with my card base and that notch with the tab. Now for my balloons, I wanted to kind of reinforce all these little die cuts put together. So I've just cut a rectangular piece of white cardstock that will be hidden behind the balloons and this will be the perfect place to glue my tab. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to line those up. You can see the blue tab a little bit below the balloons, but I'm okay with that. I didn't want to move them any further towards the bottom of my card because I didn't really like the spacing that way. So this is going to be fine because that blue blends in with that blue background. And there's enough of an image there with the balloons and the strings that you don't notice the corners of that tab too much. And look how fun that is when you pull the tab in the house, floats up in the air with those balloons. I just think that is so much fun. Now for my sentiment, I've pulled out Harold's ABCs and I'm going to be stamping out the sentiment that says adventure is out there. You can see my practice pieces up there in the top right corner. But for the pieces I'm using on my card, I'm stamping this in some black ink on some fog cardstock. So this is a very pale, gray cardstock. And I'm going to stamp each of these separate from each other because I'm going to cut them apart into separate little word banners. So they don't need to be lined up. I just need to line up each word by itself. And then once I have those stamped out, I'm going to trim it down with my paper trimmer to create one long strip. And then I'll take my scissors to cut each of these apart. And this is a really fun way to make a customized sentiment by using the ABC stamps. Now I've put some thin foam squares behind each of these. And then I'm just going to line each of them up at the top of my card. And I thought it would be fun if they were kind of floating out there too. So the is and the word out. I decided not to line them up exactly and kind of have them float down from each other like they are floating up into the sky just like the balloons on the house. Now I'm going back to that pull tab that's at the bottom. Obviously I don't want it this long and a lot of times we trim it off right at the bottom of the card but I thought I would let it hang down just a little bit so that you can have a better grasp on that tab when you pull it. And I also did not use the decorative cover piece that you can put on this that has the little arrow because I had a different idea for the arrow on this tab. I wanted to add a little heart. It's still going to point in the down direction, but I think it's kind of like the hidden arrow on this card. So I'm using all the sizes of hearts from the hearts and stars and skinny tag die. And I'm taking that teeniest, tiniest heart and adding it to the pull tab. So you just pull where the heart points down. Then I'm taking one of each of those other sizes. So I've got the little teeny tiny heart, 
the medium heart and then I'm hiding a big heart behind the house so that when you pull the tab, it reveals that heart behind, which I just think is a lot of fun and a really fun surprise detail. And of course, nothing's complete without some glitter. So I've added some glitter to the hearts and then I'm also tracing the top of my big white cloud with that glitter. And I'll be careful not to let this house come back down and get all my glitter until it is dried. And then here is my finished card. I am totally thrilled with how this one turned out. It turned out so pretty. I love all those colorful balloons. This pull and pop pull tab was perfect for this idea. And then I also love those foiled clouds in the background. I think they are so pretty. This is such a fun card and I'm really happy with how it turned out. So here's another look at that card and then what it looks like when you pull that tab and that house floats up. Thanks so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.